we meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome. My name is Reverend Sean and I'm the curate here at St Chad's Church in Rubri. And today marks the fifth Sunday after Trinity. So let us begin with a prayer. Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your spirit and kindle in all who minister the gospel your countless gifts of grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now as we come to our time of confession, as I say in the Kyrie, please join in with the last sentence of each statement. In a dark and disfigured world, we have not held out the light of life. Lord, have mercy. In a hungry and despairing world, we have failed to share our bread. 
Christ, have mercy. In a cold and loveless world, we have kept the love of God to ourselves. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. We will now hear our Bible reading, which will be read to us by Patricia. A reading from Matthew 13, chapters 1 to 9 and 18 to 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there. While the whole crowd stood on the beach, he told them many things in parables, saying, listen. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprung up quickly, since they had no depth for soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they weathered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, and brought forth grain, some in hundredfold, some in sixty, and some in thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parables of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in their heart. That is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives the joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while, and when trouble and persecution arises on the account of the word, the person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the word and the lure of the wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields. In one case, a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The parable of the sower focuses on the reception of the seed by various kinds of soil as a metaphor for the varying responses to the word of the kingdom. But who qualifies as good soil? Since soil cannot change itself, is there any hope for the hardened, rocky or thorny soil? Are these destined to be unproductive forever? We can find examples for each kind of response in the word to, in Matthew's gospel. There are many in Matthew's story who hear the word of the kingdom and do not understand. These even include the religious leaders. When we hear of the crowds, they respond positively to Jesus, especially to his miracles of healing. But yet, at the end, they turn against him and demand his crucifixion. This leaves us to wonder whether they ever really truly understood. The disciples themselves might be included among those who fall away when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word. And the rich young man, unable to part with his possessions, provides a stunning example of one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the law of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But what about the good soil? Who are those who hear the word and understand it? Who indeed bear fruit and yield an abundant harvest? In Matthew's story, it seems that these are the least likely ones. 
In chapter 21, Jesus tells the chief priests and elders, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. In the parable of the sheep and goats, the righteous bear fruit by serving the least of these. And even they are surprised to find that they have been serving Jesus. But what about the disciples? Will they ever bear fruit? After telling several more parables, Jesus asked them, Have you understood all this? Confidently, they answer yes. Yet subsequent events will reveal how little they truly understood and how quickly they will turn and desert Jesus in order to save their own skins. But what is remarkable is that in spite of all these failings, Jesus does not give up on the disciples. In fact, he continues to invest in them, even to the point of entrusting the future of his mission to them. Jesus calls Peter the rock upon which he will build his church. Even though Peter's understanding of what it means that Jesus is the Messiah is confused at best. Although Jesus knows full well that all the disciples will desert him and that Peter will deny him, he nevertheless promises them that after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. And Jesus does meet them in Galilee as he promised. And with all authority in heaven and on earth given to him, he turns them loose in the world to carry out his mission. Now Matthew's story has given us little reason to have confidence in the disciples. Little reason that is except for Jesus' promises. Especially significant is Jesus' promise that at the very end of the gospel. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now this brings us back to the parable. The main character in the parable, of course, is the sower. The sower scatters his seed carelessly, recklessly, seemingly wasting much of the seed on the ground that holds little promise for the future of a fruitful harvest. Jesus invests in the disciples who look similarly unpromising. He squanders his time with tax collectors and sinners, with lepers, the demon possessed, and all manner of outcasts. Yet he promises that his extravagant sowing of the word will produce an abundant harvest. Now, if we're honest with ourselves, we can probably find evidence of several kinds of soil in our own lives. But Jesus does not use the parable to extort hearers, not to be good soil, as though we could just make that happen by ourselves. If there is any hope, for the unproductive soil, it is that the sower keeps sowing generously, extravagantly, even in the least promising of places. Jesus' Jesus's investment in his disciples shows that he simply will not give up on them, in spite of their many failings. We trust that Jesus will not give up on us either but will keep on working on whatever is hardened, rocky or thorny within and among us. We trust in his promise to be with us to the end of the age. And as those entrusted with Jesus' mission today, we might consider the implications of this parable for how we engage in our own mission. Too often we can play it safe 
sowing the word only where we're confident that it will be well received and only where those who receive it are likely to become contributing members of our congregations. In the name of stewardship, we hold tightly to our resources, wanting to make sure that nothing is wasted. But we can stifle creativity and the energy that it takes for mission, resisting new ideas for the fear that they might not work, as though mistakes or failure were something to be avoided at all costs. But Jesus' approach to mission is quite at odds with our play it safe instincts. He gives us freedom to take risks for the sake of the gospel. He endorses extravagant generosity in the sowing of the word, even in the most perilous of places. But though we may wonder about the wisdom or efficiency of his methods, Jesus promises that the end result will be a bumper crop. He also promises that he will be with us always to the end of the age. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, Claire and the PCC are going to pray for us. So let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the community here at St Chad's, for the worshipping life of this church. Thank you for blessing us with your spirit. Thank you for being present during this most difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, we pray for our community. We ask your blessing upon all who live and work in Rubri. We pray especially for those who have found the last three months so difficult, for those who have been bereaved, for those who are still ill, for those leading large organisations, for our schools, our teachers, for families under pressure. Strengthen them all. Offer your reassurance. Touch their hearts and surround them with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayers. Living God, we are conscious of the decisions that we have to make. We pray for those making big decisions. Our government, our politicians and elected representatives. Grant them wisdom, compassion and mercy. May they make decisions for the good of all and not personal gain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, we pray to you today for local business, businesses in this community who have had a tough time. Be with them as they reopen. We pray for anybody whose jobs are under threat. Help us to reach out, to welcome them, to work with them, to collaborate and together to build a strong community that reflects your love in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We gather these prayers using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Power, power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of notices to share with you. And it is good news. We will be reopening our church from the 2nd of August. And there will be a letter coming out to those who are on our mailing list shortly. So please do try and identify it and read through it carefully. But if you are not on our mailing list, please don't worry. All the information you'll need will be on our Facebook page. So please go to that and read through it carefully. But now let us close with a prayer. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into the, all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news that we proclaim through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and those you love this day and always. Amen.